Will that Ness player not spam PK fire today? Will that Zelda stop up being in neutral over and over? Will the Incineroar not side B? More realistically, these are a lot of things that are very likely to happen when you play Smash Ultimate Online. In these difficult times, Smash Ultimate Online is the only option that we have to play against other people in the game, but it could be uh, very frustrating to say the least. There are so many factors that make playing online so difficult for many, even for people that always play online anyway. So is online worth playing? And what can we do to make it so that we enjoy it even more? In this video, we'll go over what makes online play so rage inducing and how to make it a better experience for you and everyone you know. But first, our question of the day. What's your favorite online mode to play in? Are you an online adventurer? Are you an elite smash champion? Or are you just playing for fun? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. Whether you're playing offline or online, Pro Guides is the perfect place to go to if you want to learn some new tips and tricks on how to get better at the game. We've got guides for every character and tons of techniques. Plus, we offer exclusive pro courses taught by MKLeo and Esam. You can even get yourself a personal coach via our Play With Pros program. So log on now. You can also check out our live classes here on the Pro Guides YouTube channel, Monday through Friday, 12 p.m. PST. Make sure you subscribe and turn those notifications on so you can catch me playing some battles and catch one of these. The goal of this video is to provide solutions for online Smash, but in order to do so, we first must identify the problems. As we discussed in our Do Online Tournaments Matter video, a huge issue with online play is lag. The game adds input delay to both players such that the match can stay in sync if the player's connections aren't transferring data at the same sufficient rate. Sadly, the netcode that manages this information is subpar compared to many other online games, so even a perfect connection feels much laggier than playing offline. With a less than perfect connection, the lag will increase, possibly including momentary freezes or even full-on disconnects. Certainly not the kind of thing you want when playing a fast-paced fighting game at 60 frames per second. Input delay forces you to adjust your control to compensate for lag. This makes movement, combos, and advanced techniques feel completely different. Delay also means you can't punish the same things on reaction that you would offline, resulting in a more read-based game that rewards different skills. Although it's hard to accept, the lag factor is one issue that cannot be fixed. What you can do is make sure to have a fast internet service, connect with the wire using an ethernet adapter, and set your MTU to 1500 in internet settings, and play against opponents in your own region. We go more in depth on all this in the online tournament video, but at the end of the day, you'll have to accept that online play comes with lag, no matter what. Fortunately, we have ways to remedy every other online issue. Let's move on to character choice. Because of the delayed reactions online, character viability works a bit different here. Characters who rely heavily on precision and reflexes will work less efficiently, and characters with large hitboxes and projectiles and strong KO moves are effectively buffed. Even if your main falls into the latter category though, it's likely that you'll find it harder to play your own most used character online. This is because the more time you spent with a character, the more you adjust to the muscle memory that's required for all of their combos, movement, and techniques. This will make it harder to adapt to the input delay as you're fighting against deeply developed input timings. Experiencing this can be very unsettling, as the character you feel most comfortable with offline may be the least comfortable character online, and ruin your favorite aspects of the game. There are two ways to deal with this issue. If you're committed to making your character work online, accept that you need to relearn the feels for their inputs and focus on getting the new timings down as you play online. Alternatively, you can pick a different character, maybe one that you play with from time to time but you don't have tons of muscle memory with, or maybe even a completely new character for your roster. Picking a different character you never play with can be a fun experience. Since you have no instincts built on how the character feels, the lag won't get in the way as much and you can learn their online timings from the start. Learning a new character is a fun and rewarding challenge in general, and the additional focus you'll need to learn how the character works will further distract you from the input lag. Next, online can lead to a mental battle with denial. Would I have missed this tech offline? Did lag make me drop that combo? Is my opponent's character really carried by online? The answer to these questions vary, but identifying the truth is crucial to maintaining your sanity as you venture into the chaotic world of online play. The first step you need to take is accepting that online play is a different experience. It isn't local play, so you shouldn't take it too seriously even if you're playing in an online tournament with money on the line. Okay, it could be hard to take it not serious when there is money on the line, but it's a rare scenario that you'll actually be playing a set where the winner takes home a prize, and even then you can accept the realities of online play. Beyond how seriously you take it, you'll need to accept the other variables. Understanding that you will be playing with lag and you'll need to adjust to it, that you won't be able to play your character exactly how you would offline, and that both you and your opponent will be able to get away with more whiffs as reactionary punishes are nerfed. The you and your opponent concept is important to recognize too. If you're losing, it may feel like your opponent is magically immune to the lag, 
but they're experiencing the same thing you are, even if they're better adjusted to it. Going in line with this, you should focus less on tier lists and matchup expectations. Little Mac may be the worst character offline, but he certainly packs a punch when you don't have time to reactively punish him or edge guard him precisely. This is of course just one example, as so many characters will be different to fight online. A common mistake by players new to the online environments is to get extremely frustrated by the effectiveness of moves and strategies that would have clear counterplay offline. This is a very natural reaction, but given the environment, you'll need to treat the game differently. Accept that certain moves are safe here and must be respected, and you'll need to find a new way to play some matchups. Don't forget that you may be able to get away with certain different strategies with your own character too. Once you accept the detriments of the environment, be aware of your own errors and learn to distinguish between your mistakes and online issues. Blaming online for everything may take some guilt off of yourself, but it'll only make you hate playing it more and more, fostering an increasingly negative experience. This is fine if you simply never play online, but if you're choosing to enter the net play fray, it is a mindset that will hold you back. Most of the time, you know what decisions you made, and you know what buttons you press, so deep down you know whether you really messed up or not. For the times where you're uncertain, move on and don't dwell on it. Even offline, Smash can be pretty jank and there are plenty of questionable situations. Focus on what's happening now and not what happened a moment ago. The next issue may actually be the biggest for most people, yet it's one of the least obvious. Who you play against is a huge factor, and we're not talking about the characters here. One of the biggest differences between online and offline play is that online you lose all physical and sensory connections to the human that you're playing against. In the case of Quick Play or Elite Smash, you'll be matched up with a random opponent whom you know nothing about. All you can really infer about their personality and who they are as a human is based on what you see in their gameplay. This information is extremely limited, often very misleading, and leaves a ton to your imagination, which may be pushed in the wrong direction by their gameplay. Everyone interprets things differently, but for a competitive personality, almost any kind of gameplay can be perceived as being toxic. It's one thing if your opponent starts spamming trolling moves and teabagging, but even a good read or a deep edge guard creates the idea that your opponent is really feeling himself. Your imagination can easily run with this painting an image of a cocky teenager popping off with Fortnite dances every time he hits you, but usually that's not the case. Even the teabagging player might just be a chill dude playing for fun who's become part of Quick Play's degenerate social ecosystem. Bottom line is you don't know who they are, so antagonizing them will only make for a self-induced toxicity. That person you imagine an opponent to be is born out of your own mind after all. Looking at the bigger picture, Quick Play and Elite Smash are not the greatest way to play online in many ways. Even if you don't create negative personalities for faceless opponents, you're playing with the GSP system which encourages many players to dip after a single game, and these moves are often frequented by least serious online players in general. Playing in public arenas will still pit you against unknown opponents, but this will often allow you to play many games against the same group of players with a more training-oriented goal in mind. Arenas also let you swap characters and stages for a more diverse experience. The best way to play online by far, however, is to play with your friends. All the uncertainty stemming from the lack of personal interaction with your opponent start to disappear when you're playing with people who you've played for many hours sitting right next to each other. You know exactly what their personality is, and even if they are that cocky Fortnite dancer, they're your cocky Fortnite dancer friend, so the toxicity is gone. Or if it isn't, you might want to rethink how you choose your friends. Playing with your friends, you know there's a mutual understanding of the detriments of lag, and even if you complain or john about it, this will likely be a fun interaction with people you like rather than it being a salty moment. To improve this experience even more, get your friends on voice or even video with a service like Discord. The closer the personal connection and interaction is with the people you're playing, the more you'll realize how significant an issue it can be, regardless of how much lag you're playing with. So let's review. If you want online to be fun, make sure you have a good, wired connection, pick a character you're comfortable with playing with online, accept the realities of the environment, and most importantly, play with your friends. We hope this video helps you get to know more about Smash Online, and don't forget to subscribe to Pro Guides and turn notifications on. Stay safe and have fun.